Hi, and welcome to July for our market report for Huntsville and Madison County. You know, it's been really hot in Alabama lately, but the last few weeks, it seems the temperatures have cooled a little bit. They're not the only thing cooling down. It seems the economy is cooling as well. Been some scary headlines about recession, bankruptcies, slowing sales. Today, we're going to focus specifically on what happens to the real estate market during a recession. Let's take a look. Well, we're halfway through the year and they're talking about the R word and that's not real estate. We're talking about a recession. Let's take a look. Uh, Wall Street says the recession is coming. Consumers say it's already here. You know, inflation has just been uh, skyrocketing the last few months. Just this week, we got the highest reading we've had in 40 years for inflation. Families are really suffering because of increases in gas prices and food. The rule of thumb for a recession is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. Well, we had the first quarter this year, it was negative. And projections for the second quarter, which ended last month, are that it's going to be negative or very slightly positive. So what we want to do today is we're just going to assume that we're going to have a recession. And the reason we want to do that is we want to talk about the two primary things that affect real estate, mortgage rates and housing prices. And how do those react if we actually are in a recession? Well, for buyers, we're going to talk to you guys first because interest rates have really skyrocketed over the last six months. Uh, a lot of our buyers have been kind of shell-shocked with the interest rates as they've doubled uh, basically over the last year. But it's important that you keep things in perspective. And it's important that you understand that the home is the most important part of the equation. These interest rates are volatile. They go up and down. And we're going to look at those charts here shortly. But a good saying in real estate when we're having this kind of market with interest rates is to marry the house and date the rate. You should have an opportunity later to adjust your rates and get better rates. But if you find the perfect home that you want to live in, it may not be available. Throughout history, during a recession, interest rates go up at the beginning of the recession. The Federal Reserve only has two weapons that they can use to kind of direct the economy. One is interest rates and one is money supply. Interest rates is the most visible because when they meet, they determine if they're going to raise and lower the benchmark interest rate based on what the economy is doing. So when the economy starts to slow, when recession fears start to uh, rise, when inflation is going up, they're going to raise interest rates. And that's what they've been doing recently. But they're going to raise interest rates to a point where it's going to hurt the economy and the economy is going to slow significantly. When that happens, they're going to reverse course. In order to come out of a recession, interest rates are going to be lowered to stimulate the economy moving forward. So historically, we've seen a repeated uptick in rates followed by lowered interest rates. This is the cycle that we're in right now. And you remember last month, we talked about the 30-year mortgage rate surging to 6.28% in just a week up from five and a half. And I said at that point in time, it looked like that could be at least a short-term top in mortgage rates. And that's still possible. That still looks like that's a short-term top. Current rates are back down in the fives now. But you can look at this chart, and if interest rates know more than we do, which most of the time they do, it does appear that our economy started slowing enough to put us in a recession at the beginning of the year. You can see these rates really started moving up in earnest about January of 22, so about six months ago. They were down uh, below 3.5%, peaked out a little over 6.28%, and now they're down back in the fives. But when you're talking about interest rates and buyers, you have to put these mortgage rates in perspective. This is mortgage rates from 71 through 22, and you can see that they have been very, very high in the past. This is where we, we bought our first home, as a matter of fact. It was 17%, had excellent credit. We bought a home, 17% mortgage. It's hard to believe we did that, but that's what we did. Uh, and, but then since then, rates have been falling precipitously since that point in time. And the average, actually, over that period of time is 7.77%. So we're still below the long-term average mortgage rates, even if we're in the fives or even if we get back to six. Historically, these are the last six recessions, and this is what has happened to mortgage rates during the recession. Exactly what we said earlier, the rates go up at the beginning of recession, but then the Federal Reserve starts lowering rates to stimulate the economy as we start to come out of a recession and grow the economy again. 
So these are the last six recessions beginning back in 1980. And you can see that in every case, mortgage rates declined during that period. So if we are near the top of mortgage rates as this recession is just getting underway, and as the Federal Reserve has started raising interest rates, then these mortgage rates should be peaking sometime this year. And in a year or two, they should be just like these rates, lower than they are now. For buyers, the bottom line is you're going to buy a home no matter what. You just have to decide if you're going to buy one for yourself or if you're going to buy one for your landlord. You're going to pay somebody's mortgage, and it's important for you to know whose mortgage you're paying. Are you going to pay your own and build your own equity or are you going to pay your landlord's mortgage and build the landlord equity? Now, for sellers, they're not as concerned about interest rates unless you're wanting to, to sell and buy, but you are concerned about property values. Home price deceleration does not mean price depreciation. And over the next few weeks, over the next year, you're going to hear a lot about price deceleration. We've had an abnormal period of price appreciation over the last couple of years, and that rate of appreciation is going to slow. It's not sustainable. We've been saying that for a year. But de deceleration does not mean depreciation. Over the last 10 years, this is how home prices have appreciated. This is a normal period. Three to 5% a year is normally what we expect to get from home price appreciation. This is the abnormal period that started during the pandemic, started in the, in the second quarter, third quarter of 2020. That's what is going to decelerate. This kind of appreciation will decelerate back to the norm over the next year or two. So when you see headlines about price depreciation or price appreciation being negative, that's not talking about home prices going down. That's talking about the appreciation rate being less than it was a year ago, which is what we expect to happen, which is what we expect to put us back into a normal real estate market. Now, the fact is our inventory is still at a crisis level. This is the NAR total inventory back to 1982. And when we talk about recession, the, the most recent recession that grabs everyone's memory is the Great Recession of 2008. And we've talked many times at this uh, meeting about why this is not the same situation as we had back in 2008. This is one of the things we've looked at before. This is the inventory level we had back in 2008, 4 million units. This is where we are today, a million units. So we have 25% of the inventory available to sell that we had during the time of period that we started the Great Recession. You can't have price depreciation if you don't have inventory to sell. The oversupply back in 2008 is what created the significant price drop in home prices. There were just too many homes on the market. We're in a completely opposite market now. Months of inventory for sale have started to increase nationally. This is a statistic from National Association of Realtors. You see it started to tick up back in January. Nationally, we're looking at maybe about two months worth of inventory, two and a half months on the market. That's not the case here in Madison County. Our inventory is actually down from where we started the year. We haven't had a month's worth of inventory on market in over three or four years. We're selling about 800 homes a month so if we have around 400 homes on the market, we have about two weeks worth of inventory, and that's where we are today. We started out with about three weeks worth of inventory at the beginning of the year, but then through the spring, that has dropped off. You can see that it appears in the longer term trends and the shorter term trends, it appears that our inventory may have bottomed out back in the April timeframe, and it may be on the increase. And we would expect that to happen because this is typically our busiest season. So we would expect to see more listings come online, but they seem to be consuming those listings as quickly as we can get them. And we're still in Madison County in an extremely low inventory situation. Median prices are still increasing. Uh, many, many times we've said prices can't decrease when you don't have enough homes to sell. The only thing that will cause a significant price reduction is an oversupply of inventory. And we're a long way away from that. In the past recessions, home prices have done very well. There was only one period where home prices suffered a lot, and that was back in the Great Recession of 2008. During four of the last six recessions, home prices actually appreciated. That's actually what we expect to happen this time. 
The major indices that people use to take a look at home price projections, these companies and mortgage companies that make these projections, reset their forecast uh, in the second quarter after they started being concerned about a potential recession. But they're still looking for positive growth over the next five years. This is normal growth, 3%, 4%, 5%. That's what we expect to happen. We expect to get back to a normal growth rate. But in Madison County, we're still in a strong seller's market without a doubt. You can see that it's a little less than it was last month. This is the last month reading around 80. We're down to about 70, but we're a long way away from a balanced market. And we have to get to a balanced market for a period of time before we can even talk about a buyer's market. So if you own a home, expect your home price to still appreciate, not as much as it has over the last two or three years, but we do not expect any price depreciation. What are we looking for in head? We expect prices to stabilize. We expect this rapid year-over-year 19-20% price appreciation to dissipate, to go back to a normal 3-5% to a year appreciation. Interest rates are going to remain volatile during this period while the Federal Reserve is raising and then begins to lower rates to combat inflation and boost the economy. The demand will slow. This rise in interest rates has hit first-time home buyers especially hard. They have to go back and requalify, recalibrate, make a new plan now that rates are where they are because they can't afford the same type home they were looking for this time last year. We do expect inventory to increase. Uh, inventory, this is the busiest time of year. This is when we see the most listings come to market. So we expect over the next couple of months to see some increase in inventory, but it has to go up a lot before we're in any kind of a situation where we can talk about a balanced market. We're in a seller's market now, and that looks like the case for the near term. We have a lot of resources on our website. All these links are listed below. If we can help you in any way with your next real estate move, please reach out. Let's have a great day. Oh, 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 oh,